Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's George. My name's Rach. And we have just finished a lap of New Zealand. Well, almost finished <laughs> a lap of New Zealand. We've ended up in Auckland and in today's video, we are going to give our complete guide to our experience of Auckland. So we're gonna cover off places we've stayed, things we've done, and also some top tips, which we've learned on the road. So let's jump into it. Part one, our biggest tip. What's that, Rach? It is using the weather apps in New Zealand. They are surprisingly accurate. Well, nothing against Australia, but those apps aren't as accurate as the New Zealand one. Highly recommend Met Service. So the reason that we recommend this is because a lot of the time when we've been around Auckland, it has been raining torrential rain at some points. So it's good to plan ahead and know exactly what you're getting in for. So yeah, definitely recommend using Met Service as a guide to sort of what you actually want to do during the day when it's raining. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think the, the weather really shaped our trip. Yeah. Because we were actually in the Coromandel and the rain came and it was pretty scary. Bad. Like when it rains here, it rains hard. <laughs> one of the heaviest rains we've ever seen and the van was doing this in the wind. Mm. So we kind of made the call. There's a subtropical storm in the Coromandel. We made it out with like landslides on the side of the road and... We were told we were very lucky to make it out when we did because we probably would have been stuck there, which is not ideal. Yeah, not ideal. After leaving the Coromandel, we came to Auckland and as Rachel said earlier, check the road closures because we actually went to the west coast of Auckland but the majority of the beaches are closed due to the weather and also the cyclone, which unfortunately hit, hit Auckland. So the roads are pretty damaged. Yeah, something which is so important when you're traveling to New Zealand is check the weather, road closures. That is our first tip, I would say. Weather apps and road closures. You can do that all online. Now leading on to part two of the video, which is where to stay. So after leaving the Coromandel, we drove from the south side of Auckland and the first campsite we stayed in, which Rach found. Yes, thank you. Oh, what, what, what app did you find that on, Rach? <laughs> on CamperMate. Wow. A little, little plug for CamperMate. Yeah, that also is a, a fantastic app. And if you're coming to New Zealand, you must use it. It tells you all the best places to stay, places to eat, little things like where water is, service stations, Wi-Fi, all that sort of stuff. But I digress, where to stay. Yeah, <laughs> very good. CamperMate, make sure you download it. So we stayed at Murphy's Law Irish Bar. So good it's so good it's this awesome pub which is an irish bar amazing food mm -hmm. really really good food good beer as well and in the back they have built a massive gate and you can actually camp out the back with powered sides mm. And it's super secure. You can only get in with the buzzer that they give you um, in and out. So there's no one walking past your site that doesn't belong there. There's no drunk people from the bar that actually go out the back. It's literally all very secure. It's really, really nice. So that's if you're coming from the south side of Auckland. If you're coming from the north side, we actually had to find somewhere to spend mm -hmm. three or four days because of the rain. Yeah, it was ended up being four nights. And that's the longest place I think we've ever stayed camping. <laughs> yeah. So we stumbled across Red Beach Top 10 Holiday Park, which was brilliant. So good. It was quite reasonably priced. Obviously yeah. the prices vary throughout the year, but it had amazing facilities. It was right on the water. So we made it out for a few walks, a few runs. It was, yeah, fantastic. We went to the shopping center a few times and we <laughs> felt like we were locals because we knew where all the countdowns were. <laughs> went to the library, of course, to do some work. Yeah, overall, it was a really, really beautiful campsite would recommend it very clean facilities it's also like some permanent houses there which is mm. not unusual mm. it did have a gym there but we couldn't use it due to water damage because there's been so really much sad. yeah so much rain here <laughs> we were gutted <laughs> yeah so if you've watched the channel for any period of time you know me and Rach love hiking because we had so much rain we couldn't go out hiking every day, but when the rain did ease, we couldn't wait to go out for a hike. So the first one we did was called Long Bay Path. I'll put a link to the all trails below, so you can click on that and, and do the same hike. But yeah, it was really beautiful. Rachel was taking lots of photos. I'm a very much a novice photographer I'm learning at the moment, and it was really beautiful scenery to kind of practice on. There's beautiful coastal views. There's there was some wildlife, some birds, things like that. So it was just really nice. You had a very good teacher. Yes, that's right. Lots of great coastal views. We got the drone out. It was, uh, yeah, just a really stunning place to go for a walk. And I think it was more because it'd been raining so much. We were so excited to, it to get so out nice. and, and walk. The other hike we did was the Shakespeare Heritage and Lookout Trail. This, this was... was so good. It was really unexpected. I don't think I had a look at the old trails when George found it, so I really didn't know what to expect. I thought it was 
based on the name maybe like a park wasn't really sure but at the start of the trail you go through almost like a rainforest it's obviously not a rainforest but it's kind of like deep in the jungle and then you come out and it's beautiful coastal views over rolling hills and then it leads on to this really famous gigantic picture frame that you can stand in get photos so that was just really really fun as well really really fun and even going into the park there was a massive disinfectant station yeah. so make sure you brush your shoes put the disinfectant on it's all to do with conservation because yeah there's some in endangered species i think of trees yeah and certain soils that you bring in from your shoes can even the tiniest bit yeah can micro. basically stuff that up so yeah. yeah they're really really big on disinfecting your shoes brushing them all off which is really great that's at the start and the end of the trail yeah but yeah absolutely amazing trip. that's one of my favorite hikes yeah i think we've done in new zealand it's so fun so if you're in auckland you could maybe drive out there but it's not far yeah, if you have a car, if you're camping, then I definitely recommend staying near there or, yeah. or, or doing that, if you're staying, especially if you're staying at Red Beach, it was only a short drive. Oh, there's also the World War II pool box. Oh, so, yeah. yeah so, so there's a World War II pool box on that hike as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's just full of scenery in like a 5k loop. You can make it longer as well, I think an 8k loop. Mm. As we mentioned, it has been torrential rain. So on one of the days we found on Google, something really fun to do which was called game over <laughs> so it's basically like an arcade and if you've seen previous videos as well you'll know that we love an arcade we were a little bit competitive and there was mini putt at this arcade and we love some mini putt so far we've played two games while we've been in new zealand i've won a game you've won a game and we had a third game yet to tally the scores we can come back to that you might have lost the scorecard <laughs> i think george threw it away for some reason no i'm pretty sure it's in the front because I did really well. Yeah, you did really well. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really, really fun. The mini golf was themed as Jurassic Park. So there are massive dinosaurs. So if you're into that, that's awesome. Massive arcade there as well. You can do full on games. And there was also a little go-karting track, um, which we didn't do, but that looked really, really fun as well. So yeah. that's definitely something to check out if it's raining. Yeah, pretty cool. Or not. Um, yeah, even if it's, if not, it's not raining. It's yeah. just like literally north of Auckland. So I really think that's fun. a really cool thing to do. If you have a family or yeah, if you're on your own, I think. Or any, if you're just big scenario. kids like us. Yeah, if you're big kids <laughs> like us and you love those kind of things, then yeah, that was that was awesome. So just to recap on where to stay, you can stay in some amazing holiday parks in a camper van like ours. This has been a fantastic experience. You can stay in freedom camping or you can check into an Airbnb. That was easy. So welcome to our Airbnb. We are right in the middle of Auckland here. It was a really good find, well done, Rach. Thank you. <laughs> so we've actually been pretty busy over the past couple of days. Where we're staying, the hotel is called The Quadrant and it's in a really good location. On Saturday night when we first arrived, we went out for dinner. We went to a restaurant called Char Grill, which had really good food and it was pretty reasonable prices for New Zealand and Auckland. Yeah, it was really good. You can walk down the strip and there's lots of kind of like more expensive, fancy restaurants. There's also your normal takeaway sorts of food. So anything for any budget, really. Yeah, that was good. Yesterday was a very busy day. It was bittersweet because we had to drive to take our camper, our camper, our rental camper, <laughs> back to the rental company, Tui Campers. So on the way, we actually stopped off to do a quick morning hike. <laughs> which was really fun. We actually went to Mount Eden, which I'd highly recommend doing. I did it last time I was in Auckland and it was just a must do when you are here. It's actually the tallest volcano in Auckland, which is interesting. Yeah, and that's kind of what's so great about Auckland as well. You have the heart of the city and then just outside of it, there's a volcano that you can walk up and see the big crater. So it's really quite incredible. 196 meters. It's pretty tall. Pretty, pretty <laughs> tall. So yeah, would highly recommend doing that. You get some amazing views at the top, so you can see the Sky Tower, you can get views all around, so yeah, it was really, really cool. Then we dropped off the camper, which was, yeah, kind of Sad. bittersweet, because it's been our <laughs> home for the past four or five weeks. Before that, we're actually in a different camper. It was a relief to give back a rental vehicle, and you know, there was no problems or anything, so yeah, that was good. But yeah, obviously it was a bit, a bit sad leaving the, leaving the camper. Cool, and on the way back, we stopped off at One Tree Hill, which is another really small hike. And you go to the summit, you can go to the top. There's a really nice monument up there. On the monument, there is lots of history written on there. So I highly recommend walking up there and reading about the history of New Zealand. It's quite fascinating to, to, to read. And yeah, it's just well worth, again, amazing views all around. You can see the Sky Tower in Auckland, just from a different perspective, a bit further out, mm. I believe. But yeah, that's all in the south 
both of those uh, hikes, which are which are really cool. And then when we got back, the quadrant actually has a gym and spa. So we did a workout in the gym, visited the hot tub, mm. which is quite fun. Yeah. Just making the most of the facilities. Now leading on to today, which is our last full day in Auckland and in New Zealand before we, we fly off tomorrow. So bittersweet, isn't it? Yeah. We're excited to go home and see Bob. A dog. <laughs> but it is sad to be leaving New Zealand. It's yeah. been such, such a good trip. Bob and others. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. swear others too. Yeah, others. Especially Bob. Others as well. <laughs> so we want to make the most of our last full day in Auckland. So we're going to go out to the city and explore. First stop is going to be the Sky Tower, followed by various other activities. <laughs> You'll have to come along and find out. And that's the good news. You're going to come along with us on this bit. So let's go. <laughs> Look at the view from our balcony. That is the Sky Tower, which we'll be going to shortly. It's also Harbour Views. This is not a drill. This is really not a drill. Oh, I'm better out of that lift. <laughs> it's real floor 51, which... It's high enough for me. It's high enough. Yeah, there's, there's more, but it's, it's high enough. It has some amazing views and it gives it all uh, pictures on what each place is. Behind us is Wahiki Island, which is another really good thing to do. Not for us on this trip, but would recommend it. regular tickets to come up here but you can also do a sky jump or a sky walk where you walk around the outside yes we saw someone doing the sky jump live no, it was interesting to watch terrified poor thing but he made it off so <laughs> if he's watching this if you want to share your GoPro footage, that'd be quite cool. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty expensive. It's a few hundred dollars. Yeah. But I think the price has changed, but... Um, to do the jump, not the yeah. walk. Or, like, not the observation deck or anything. That's about $60 for the two of us if you buy the tickets online. Yeah, if you buy the tickets online, which the online system wasn't working. <laughs> and it's $70 if you buy them at the desk, so we managed to get George online prices. George managed to swindle it. <laughs> so, cheers. But yeah, $60 is a bit more palatable, but it's still pretty expensive, but the views are really good, so yeah. I guess it depends on what you want to do. But there's something for everyone here. So One Tree Hill and Mount Eden we visited yesterday and they are right over there. So One Tree Hill, Mount Eden, that's awesome. Sky Tower, Rachel, was it worth it? $60? What do you reckon, George? <laughs> it's a tough one because you sort of have to do it when you're here. Yeah, it's very synonymous with Auckland. So, I mean, glad we did it, but $60 when it... I swear when I used to live here, well, in New Zealand, it used to be free. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Depends if you want to go, how badly you want it. It's good views, but it's very expensive, but it's one of those sort of must things to do. So, yeah. now it's time for some lunch. Yes. What's for lunch, Rach? Subway. Eat fresh. Jobs are good. <laughs> so what do you think of lunch, Rach? It was good, but I have to say Australia has the upper hand on the subway for me. Yeah. What did you think? I think they're about the same. Really? Yeah. I don't think one, one was overly better. We shared a foot long because it was so expensive. so expensive to order two six inches. Oh my goodness. So uh, Rach's flavour of just chicken, tomato and carrot was interesting. Normally, it's okay, it's carrot, cucumber, tomato, but normally it's really flavoursome in Australia and it wasn't overly flavoursome here, so. No. 
Yeah. But now we're walking through the Auckland domain to the museum. Okay, so we just got back to our hotel and that museum was absolutely brilliant. It was amazing. It was the New Zealand War Memorial Museum and we could just see why it was so highly rated of things to do in Auckland. It was absolutely unreal. Yeah, did you prefer that or the Sky Tower? I think the museum. <laughs> yeah, it was such a good experience and to learn about all the different cultures all around the world, there was as you can see from the video, they went through the dinosaurs and the world wars and yeah, lots of different uh, periods of time and how New Zealand was formed and the volcanic activity as well. There was even a simulator to experience what a volcano would be like, which was pretty scary actually. Yeah. That was well worth doing. I would highly recommend it. Sky Tower, you kind of have to do it if you're here, but you don't have to, it's just expensive. So if you're here for a weekend, it doesn't make too much difference, but that puts a knock on our budget at the minute. So yeah, that wraps up the New Zealand series, oh my goodness. which is pretty strange to say. Yeah. It's been quite a few episodes. If you've watched this one, but haven't watched previous episodes, go back and watch it from the start. It's uh, it's brilliant content. It is. We start in Christchurch. If you, if you don't know, we start in Christchurch. We make our way around the South Island and then up through the North Island. So if you want some ideas on what to do, Go back and watch those. Yeah, awesome. And coming up tomorrow, we fly to back to Australia for a very good friend's wedding. Rach is a bridesmaid and we get to see Bob and family and friends. And then we fly to the UK. So we have some really exciting travel plans coming up in Europe. So if that sort of travel content's your thing, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any content. And if you have any video requests, leave them in the comments top things to do in New Zealand or anything around that, please let us know. Yeah, give it a thumbs up and we will see you soon. See you then. Bye.